Hey, what's up guys, Every Giant Root here, and in this video, we are gonna have a look at how we can create this 3D animated button in Figma step-by-step. -step. I'm gonna be leaving a link of this file in the description of this video so you can follow along. So let's dive into it. So first thing you need to do here is add a text. All the buttons have text, so I'm just gonna create a text. I'm gonna say it download. It's gonna be a 24 size font. Uh, and I'm gonna be using an icon. So I use a popular library called Feather Icons for my all icons. So I'm just gonna search for a download button real quick. And what I'm gonna do is uh, constraint the proportions so that when I resize this, it is proportionate. So I'm just gonna make it 32. And what I wanna do here is actually, instead of scaling it like this, the problem here is that it doesn't scale the stroke. So what I can do here is control Z and go to the scale option. You can select the scale from here as well. Uh, and I'm gonna scale it from here, 32 by 32, and it's gonna scale automatically with the stroke scale as well. So I'm just gonna put it beside the button and I'm gonna select both of them and click add auto layout. There you go. And I'm gonna have it 12 gap between these two right so we have our text here uh, another thing i want to do here is add some padding so vertical padding i'm gonna give 32 and uh, horizontal padding maybe 60 yeah that looks nice and what i want to do here is i want to add some fill so if i click fill it will add a fill background so i do have some colors here that I want to use here. So what I'm going to do is add a linear gradient to it. So go into fill, select this option, and just go ahead and select one of the colors for the first color and the second color, select the second color, and let's close it up. Oh, actually, I want to change the direction of the gradient. Yeah, it doesn't have to be perfect, but this is how I would like it to have. Right. So once that done, I'm going to make it rounded so i'm going to give it 999 radius uh, corner radius and i'm going to add some stroke right so this stroke is way too thin so i'm just going to increase the stroke to up to three yeah that looks nice All right so we have our basic button and i'm going to call this button one right so once you have this button what you want to do here is <coughs> sorry what you want to do here is duplicate this bunch of times uh, so one and two right so we have this one as button two and we're gonna call this one as mask uh, you will know why I'm doing this in a, in a second but just follow along so we have button two button one and mask uh, what I'm gonna do here I'm gonna get rid of these two things from here because I just need it for the masking and what I'm gonna do here is just overlap these buttons together and I'm gonna put the mask here as well. So we have our button one at the bottom, then we have button two, and then we have our mask. Right, so what I wanna do here is add a frame, uh, and frame around all these, so it it encloses all the components, uh, all the frames inside it. So now we have a parent frame that has a mask, button two, and button one. What I wanna do here is select this frame, Let's call it wrapper for now. And I wanna remove the clip content from here. And I'm gonna fit to size so that it automatically fits to the size. And I'm gonna get rid of the, the fill for now so that it doesn't have any background. I do wanna uh, make some changes here because we, do, we don't see the text anymore, but we will see that in a second why we are doing this. Uh, because we're gonna be using this layer as mask but just follow along for now. The first thing that we need to do here is add some kind of reflection. So I'm just gonna draw a really long line here, uh, a rectangle, not a line. Uh, you can choose the rectangle from here and draw a line. And I'm gonna, sorry, duplicate this line by just holding Option key on Mac, or I think so it's Alt key on Windows. And I'm just gonna decrease this size a bit, a tad. And I'm just gonna make them closer. I'm gonna make this white 
and I'm going to re reduce the opacity to up to 20%. Cool. And I want to frame them together so that when I select them, these are together. So I'm going to call them reflection. There you go. And let's rotate this a bit. Now what I want to do here is add this reflection into the, the frame here, the wrapper frame. So how do I do that? I mean, once I put it over here, it doesn't go inside uh, the wrapper. So you you might want to drag it and put it inside the wrapper just like this. So now it's in wrapper, but we can see that it's still showing outside this frame because we don't have the clip content option on. So what we are going to do is use this mask now. So I'm just going to select the reflection and the mask, right click and say use as mask. And there you go. We have the reflection and we have, we can now see the text as well, which is text coming from the button too. Right. So what I'm going to do here is actually move this reflection out of this uh, frame, not out of this frame, but just out of the visible portion of this frame. So I'm just using the, the arrow keys to move uh, the reflection out. Uh, the arrow keys on your on the your on your keyboard or whatever you're using. Uh, just move them out. There you go. You have that. The problem with uh, using mouse is that once I drag this, it can go outside the frame or outside the wrapper and you 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 can make a mistake. So I like to use arrow keys. Right. So we have our a reflection outside for now. One another thing that I want to add is some shapes. So I do have some shapes. Where are they? Yeah, there you go. Let's just bring them in here. Uh, these are some basic shapes, nothing too fancy. Uh, I've created these shapes using these tools uh, just to save some time. You can create whatever shape you want uh, and just frame them together. So if I open this, you can see all of these are some shapes and I've just framed them together by selecting all and then right clicking and then saying frame uh, frame selection. Right. So once you have that, what I want to do is just cut this or copy this. Uh, let's just cut this or control X or you can do it from here as well as copy. Uh, so I'm just going to copy this, select the wrapper frame, make sure to select the wrapper frame and paste it. What, what it's going to do is put that shapes on top of everything. And you can still show uh, see the shapes, although it's going outside the wrapper. And that's because we selected, uh, deselected the clip content. All right. So we have our basic frame ready. What we want to do now is just duplicate this wrapper one more time so that we have two wrappers and everything is same. Right. So what I want to do is, let's move this out of the way. Right, so what I want to do here is make some changes. One of the changes that I want to make is that uh, on the, the first frame, I don't want the shapes to be visible. So I'm just going to select, go into the wrapper. I'm just going to call it wrapper one so that it's easier and wrapper two. So in the wrapper one, select the shapes. And let's use the scale tool. So go into the scale tool and resize this into the center uh, by holding Alt key on Windows or Option key on Mac. So oh, make sure you don't flip them, all right? All right, one more time. Resize them just like that. And let's go into design. And now let's reduce the opacity to zero. There you go. Now, what you want to do here is move the reflection so that when I hover on the button, it should reflect, right? That it's something glossy or something. So I want to go into wrapper, go into the mask group and select the reflection. And again, using the same keyboard arrow keys, I'm just going to move this onto this side and outside of the frame. And one more thing I want to do here is basically make it into a 3D button. So for that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of these together, the mask group. Uh, mm, yeah, the mask group, button, and button 1. 
by holding shift key just rotate them a little bit just like that just a tad bit and then I'm gonna select button one and again using arrow keys I'm just gonna bring this just a tad bit over here so that it gives that 3d depth effect and on this uh, frame what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rotate the shapes a bit yeah just like that so that it has some character to it when I move them together so you're seeing that where, where it is going we are gonna be creating components out of out of it so let's just drag them together and go into the component section and click create component set and what it's gonna do is basically add two component variants uh, the one the first one is called wrapper one and the second one is called wrapper two now let's call this animating button sorry right let's try it out actually but before that we need to add some animation <laughs> right so go into prototype select the button drag from the first button to the second one and make sure oh, not this one go into the compo uh, make sure to select the frame not something else uh, the variant actually so you select the variant go to while hovering and I want to keep this a gentle animation make sure to select a smart animate and gentle there you go once that that's done let's try it out actually uh, so I do have a frame over here that we can try this out so I'm just gonna duplicate this component in my frame in my hero section here and I'm gonna try this out this might not work because I'm just doing it as we go oh my god this is looking awesome right so this is how you can create this beautiful animating button with within just a few minutes it's so, so simple right so I'm gonna be adding the Figma file in the description of the video as I've told you earlier you can download it and play with it and start using this component wherever you want uh, I hope you like this video give this video a thumbs up make sure to subscribe the channel for more content like this average that dude signing off peace out